Well, it, you know, I've asked several people because I was pleasantly surprised that so many people have reacted so positively to the show. Yeah. Um, I think mainly because it, it, it's, it's very simple and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's a lot of what you see people gravitate towards in television before Virgin River. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of, you know, complex storylines yeah. or, you know, lots of superhero shows have been doing really well. And um, so I just wasn't sure that people were going to enjoy it um, just based on what I had been, I mean, like Stranger Things and, you know, lots of sci-fi and that sure. kind of stuff seemed to be doing really well. Um, but, uh, but what most people say is that there's, um, this lovely sense of escapism that you get when you watch the show. Yeah. Um, it's set in a beautiful place. You know, you're, you're watching this woman who's, you know, dealing with a lot of heavy grief, mm -hmm. sort of find love in this unexpected way. Yeah. And um, you know, the, the show is full of cliffhangers every episode. It's let it roll. You can't turn it off. Well, um, I grew up in Darien, Connecticut till I was 11. Yeah. And then yeah. I moved to Los Angeles um, and then moved to Mill Valley. So I've lived in small towns and the big city. And I mainly lived in Los Angeles for about 23 years. Um, yeah. Recently, five years ago, I moved to a very tiny town of about 500 people. So, and that was actually a really hard transition for me um, because I was so used to living like, you know, in a city and having everything at my fingertips. And, right. you know, if you want to go to a nice restaurant, it's really easy to go out and, you know, you can go shopping and whatever you need. Um, but now I live in a town where I have to drive at least 25 minutes to the grocery store. It was an adjustment, but it's an adjustment that has been so wonderful for me. Um, you know, now I live in a small town, much like Virgin River. It's it's not as beautiful as Virgin River, I'll be honest. <laughs> you get this wonderful sense of community that Virgin River has. That's a huge, huge thing that, um, that I've been missing most of my life. And I think a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we yeah. most people don't get that community, that that sense of of you know knowing your neighbor, because um, you certainly don't in Los Angeles. We did, um, which is was fantastic because we were both um, cast separately. We never had a uh, we never had a chemistry reading together, so we just got really lucky that way. He's, he's an incredible actor and I love having scenes with him. Um, we work really well off of each other too, which, you know, is, is so huge. I mean, he's just, he's been around forever. He knows this business backwards and forwards. And, you know, it's, it's so wonderful when you get to work with people that really know what they're doing. Um, and yeah, he, he directed uh, two episodes in the first season and two episodes in the second season. And she, she plays her part and Annette is so much fun to work with. And she's so, she brings a different energy to the show, um, which is, is just, it's, it's actually a little piece of the puzzle you don't realize you need, yeah. but you need it. I think that uh, Mel tries to maintain a level of, uh, professionalism um, and grace. Uh, so that's kind of how I see those those scenes. I mean, she tells people off as much as she can. I mean, she definitely, you know, she she had some instances with Tim in the first season, and yeah, yeah. I mean, when she walked into the office, I was like, "This is all I'm going to do." I'm, I'm not gonna like just walk out the door, but that's not, you know, that, that, that doesn't work for the scene or the show. You know, the, yeah, there's, there's, there's levels of frustration in that you would like to be saying more, or doing more in those scenes, but you know that it doesn't serve the scene and it doesn't serve the show to go that direction. 
Um, well, what's interesting was I, 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 I feel like I actually used a lot of my personal life for the character because um, of her complex losses that she had gone through. And unfortunately, I've had a few losses in my own life. So diving into those dark places was kind of too natural for me, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but in that, what I was trying to convey, and hopefully I think this will sort of, you'll, you'll see this arc happen a little bit more in the second season was her, her grief, you know, she's very grief stricken in the first season and she's, but she's really trying to overcome it and she doesn't want to let it drag her down. Um, but grief is all consuming and it is very hard to get over. And, you know, there's a lot of personal um, growth and strength we see in Mel throughout the first season. And I think what you'll see in the second season is she finally starts to come out of that dark grief. And um, I was hoping that, you know, putting, putting all of my own uh, experience with grief and loss into the character and, and showing her rise above it would inspire people that might be going through um, those traumatic events in their own lives as well. That is, that is complex. Um, you know, her, the tension that she has with Charmaine is obviously she doesn't think, Mel doesn't think she can have her own children and in, has to find, um, you know, empathy and respect and, um, you know, she's, she's a nurse, she became a nurse. And so I think that's sort of like what is driving uh, her to maintain a civil relationship with Charmaine, um, even though Charmaine likes to press Mel's buttons quite a bit. Um, so it's, I think throughout this second season, it's a, it's a real struggle for, for Mel to maintain that, uh, that sort of level of respect because Charmaine doesn't like her at all. Um, and she's not making it easy for, for Mel to, to try to help her through a pregnancy, which we'll see. I don't know how much of that I'm allowed to um, get into. Yeah, well, I think it was actually, it's, it's always fun to get into it with uh, Tim Matheson. Um, it's always fun to have a good argument with him, uh, as our characters, obviously, not, not in real life. We get along really well. But um, so, you know, that, that aside, I think that they, they get into it now and then. And, but, you know, Doc is an older man, and he's very set in his ways. And he wasn't ready to have someone come into his practice and sort of to share his space with. So it took a lot for him, especially at his age, as I said, People are become very set in their ways at that point. Um, so, you know, he found, a, you know, the, we see a softness develop in him for Mel um, because she won't, she, she holds him to a high standard and she, she won't let him uh, walk all over her. She says, I am here, I am a woman and, and this is my place and we're colleagues and, you know, deal with it. And I think he finds respect for her uh, through that. And they develop kind of like a, a father-daughter relationship uh, throughout the second season, which is really lovely to see um, because you don't see Mel with her parents. I mean, you know, she's lost, you know, lost that in her life. And so it's really, it's a lovely dynamic. And those are some of my favorite scenes with Tim. I'm trying to remember between the first and the second season. Um, there's a scene where Mel is paying tribute to Mark and, uh, and uh, Doc and Hope are there by her side. And it's, uh, it's a really lovely moment. And you can see how the three care for each other very deeply, however, you know, quick that scene was, but it was really lovely. 
Um, well, yeah, that does, it, 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 it kind of does go along with what I was saying about her overcoming her grief. Um, she definitely didn't move to Virgin River looking for love. You know, she was really trying to escape her loss. But um, I think the, the dynamic between Mel and Jack is really just undeniable. And um, there's a lot of obstacles get, that get thrown in their path. And of course, one of them is Charmaine. That's probably the biggest one. Um, you know, I think Mel was, you know, pushing back, pushing back, pushing back in the first season and then decided to, to, to be vulnerable and open her heart. And then of course she got a rude awakening and, um, you know, so she started to push him away again. But I think that's, you know, I think they're going to go back and forth for a little while. And I, you know, that they love each other so much. I hope they end up together in the end. Um, but they have a lot, they have a lot of, um, obstacles to, to get over tons of them. Gosh, they just keep flying at them. And I know in the books, it's not that way, but this is television. You know, we got to keep people on their toes. Yeah. You know what? I actually found that, um, people were recognizing me more from Virgin River than they were recognizing me from This Is Us. Yeah. So lucky, you know, so, so, so lucky to, to be able to be on This Is Us. I had tested with Mandy for uh, the role of Rebecca originally with the, yeah, Milo was their only choice, but they had a couple, you know, me, it was me, Mandy, and another girl that I hadn't actually um, met yeah. yet. Um, and when I saw Mandy walk into the audition, I was like, oh, she's perfect. She's just perfect. She's just so perfect for Rebecca. I couldn't yeah. even, you know. And so when they started to film the show, I, you know, I was obviously devastated that I didn't get the role, but then they came to me with the, the role of Sophie. And um, so I put myself on tape. This was two months after I had had my son and, um, and they, they uh, cast me off tape because I had already, um, already met the producers and everything. And, uh, and so I was just elated that I was able to go back and work with everybody um, and continue this, this role. I wish that I was in the show more, yeah. but it's hard to do two shows at once, right?